teen Iranian bride killed for seeking a divorce. In a heart-wrenching episode reflective of the persistent issue of honor killings in Iran, 40, excuse me, 14-year-old, 14, Mona Agai of uh, Ravanchar was killed by, tragically killed by her brother for seeking a divorce. The Center for Human Rights in Iran brought attention to the incident, which parallels the horrendous murder of 17-year-old Ghazale Mona Haderi last February. Haderi's husband, caught on video with her severed head, was sentenced to only eight years in prison. Such, such incidents of honor killing, deeply rooted in societal beliefs in Iran's legal framework, often see perpetrators, especially fathers, facing minimum consequences. The law allows for fathers to avoid the death sentence for such crimes, often resulting in them only facing prison time or having to pay out blood money, which can be waived by the victim's mother. This leniency perpetuates the frequency and normalcy of these killings, calling for urgent reform. So, um, yeah, this is, yeah, just horrible and really sad. There was this girl who was a child bride, only 14 years old, and she was seeking a divorce from her husband. And because of that, it's not that even her husband killed her. Her own brother killed her for Why? seeking this divorce. Why would the... I don't understand. Why would the brother... Why would the brother... What? Okay. So there's so many weird things. I mean, I don't I don't even know why I'm asking for why, as if there would be a good answer to that. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the weird things is that I thought the husband killed her because she was seeking divorce, but there was her own brother somehow insisting that it's not good to divorce your husband and killed you because of it. Uh, the fact that she's 14... When was she married if she's seeking a divorce at 14? Do I don't know that information. I, know. I couldn't see that in English media. Oh, my God. It's so disgusting. And, guys, this is Islam. And I know some Muslims might come and say, like, no, these Islamophobes here are telling you this is Islam, but Islam does not allow this. It's true. Islam does not allow this. But Islam makes this possible. So don't let them trick you. This killing this woman is considered a sin in Islam. This it's girl, Islam. she's really a girl. Yeah, yeah, it's girl. So, but th that's a trick. Remember that that they think that as soon as it, if a Muslim is trying to say that this is, has nothing to do with Islam, they think they have made a point by saying there's nothing in Islam that allows this. Technically, they're correct. There's nothing in Islam that allows this. However, killing a girl has Islamically has very is punish the punishments are very very small. If she was a boy, the punishments for it would be severe. Right. So, a family that is seeking honor is more likely to commit a crime like this knowing how low the punishment is for killing a girl. Sometimes you don't even have to go to jail if you could somehow pressure the family of the other side to issue a forgiveness or something, right? And also the motivation for it is also Islamic. Even though Islam considers this to be a sin, you know, to, uh, the, the the amount the shaming that exists the amount of the tabooness of this the honor culture that Islam promotes creates the motivation in a society that the the motivation for cleansing of a society of a family that leads to acts like this and also the fact that Islam itself Quranically allows violence upon women and it, it, it not just allows it but demands it just breaks the tabooness of being violent toward women. It just allows that. It makes it acceptable because the Quran allows it, right? So because of all these put together, 
the fact that the Islam considers makes makes it allows you for you to have such low punishment for killing girls, the fact that the shame culture and the honor culture is promoted by Islam, and the fact that Islam normalizes and demands violence upon women, all of this come to get uh, together. Uh, it's quite reasonable. It's quite understand understandable for why we see such honor violence mostly mostly in Islamic communities with a huge margin from anywhere else. This is not just correlation. This is definitely causation. Islam causes this. So again, just remember these three things that I said to you. Next time someone says and tries to tell you that this can't be because of Islam, because Islam considers this to be a sin. Just remember what I said, because it's very important. Because if we don't understand the problem, we will never come up with a solution. And the problem here is Islam. It usually is. Anyways, do you want to add anything? Or should I just... No, did you hear about this case at all in Persian media? Because I saw no. people talking about this on social media a little bit. No, I heard it from you. So thank you for that. Okay. Oh, D highlighted some comments. Mm -hmm. uh, Jasmine saying the religion of peace on display right here throw out the garbage and return to your roots where women had freedom that was from Jasmine Lee, uh, this is another person with a weird username saying effing bastards they killed their sister and talk about honor 100% they took they look like Neanderthals okay this is this is seems weird I don't like this I don't like well, that. I mean that that's from a user whose name is uh, legalized meth, so I'm not going to take their opinions too seriously. Right? I don't know. Okay, that's a weird username to have. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse <laughs> me. Legalized meth now is the user. Right. Don't YouTube. We're not saying yeah. that, by the way. Yes. So we are not doing that. But the. No, drunk your band, you know, how do you say that in the South Park voice? I don't know how to do that, but you have to just imagine it. Um, we got two super chat. Uh, thank you so much, Andy from Canada, with a $14 super chat from Andy. Thank and you very much. And it's a hippo much. going like, yeah, thumbs up. Oh, I don't see that. Let me see. Thank you so much. It's like, it's a, um, it's a it's a hippo being cool and all. Uh, no man uh, gave us another super chat saying congratulations on passing the math act. Good job. Well, it hasn't completely passed. It's it passed the. the it passed the house, but it needs to pass this uh, the senate as well. So, but yes, good good progress so far. So thank you so much, no man, for reminding us about that, and thank you for Susie for convincing um, at least one congressman to not just vote for this bill, but also to sponsor it. So thank you so much for Susanna for being part of making this a possibility. Thank you. Thank you. I try. Thank you to <laughs> the local Iranian American community for giving me this opportunity, really. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, somebody's asking, what's the Mass Act? We should probably have a new segment on this once it gets hopefully passed by the Senate as well. So stay tuned, guys. Stay tuned. So, yeah, yeah people are asking, what is the Mass Act? Okay, yeah, yeah, we, we will have we will have a new segment. No, don't tell them. No, tell them. Actually, tell them. One cent. I just wanted to tease it, but then I realized the Massa Act ready. is a piece of legislation that just passed the House of Representatives almost unanimously. Um, now it goes to the Senate before it can get signed into law. And basically, it's a sanctions package on the office of the president of the Supreme Leader, the office of the president of the Islamic Republic, and other various important. Um, positions within the government. Uh, and it's a bill that has been pushed for tirelessly by the Iranian American community in recognition of the human rights abuses that uh, the regime has uh, brutalized civilians with in the past year. Um, and uh, yeah, oh yeah, there's a picture of me with the congressman. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Susie, for doing all of this. Yeah, of That's course. Great. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, guys, if you're an American, please contact your senator and tell them that it's important that this the Mass Act uh, gets a vote uh, so that it also passed the Senate. If it gets two third majority in the Senate, then uh, the president cannot veto it and it becomes law. So it becomes law and it's not vetoable as well. So hopefully we get. A lot of support for this. So if you're an American, contact your you could like look up what the Massa Act is, and then contact contact your senator um and tell them that they need to vote for this, right? And also follow this is um Susie's Instagram. So follow her on Instagram for updates like this. Her link to, oh, link true. to her yes, Instagram. My Instagram is triple dimpled. Triple dimpled. Because of when she smiles, she has three dimples on her face. So yeah. that's why. Yeah. <laughs> that's <was> cute. <laughs> yeah. that's... I don't know why that just came out of me. That is adorable. That's adorable. That's good. I like it. I like it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Animation is saying, why can't I see Atheist Republic Twitter Twitter posts on, from India? Because the government of India took Atheist Republic to the courts and forced Twitter to stop us from being seen in India, something that Pakistan hasn't even done. Pakistan has done that for our Facebook, but not for our Twitter, right? So we are our Facebook is not a lot seen in Pakistan and India because the government of Pakistan has blocked us in Pakistan. And the government of India has blocked us in India, but Twitter were only blocked in India and not in Pakistan. So we have had three governments right now taking legal actions against us, right? Uh, Pakistan, in India, and Malaysia. We're trying to, yeah, so we got the Hindu and Muslim covered. We're trying to get a Christian covered as well, but that's going to be difficult. We'll do that. We'll try, we're trying to complete the set. Yeah. So there's that. <laughs> Do you know who makes the most amazing, gorgeous, and other adjectives that I can't use here on YouTube? Blasphemous art ever? We do. And for some reason, we are giving it away for free. Download them now using the link in the description before we change our mind.